Hey YouTube, this is Zylock with Media Hindsight, and I'm here um, because I want to bring you guys some news. Borderlands, the pre-sequel, the character skill trees have finally um, been released um, from Gearbox, so now we can kind of play around with some specs and kind of get an idea of how we're going to uh, play our characters a couple weeks before the game comes out, which is kind of fun. And I wanted to bring you guys a video on, you know, some of the classes that, or some of the characters, not classes per se, but the characters that I'm most interested in playing, what I think that I am going to, uh, you know, base my first builds off of. Uh, as always, when we finally get the game, some of the skills are more or less useful than we thought they were originally, or at least they are on paper. So we're going to see how it goes. Um, I'm going to bring you guys some videos over the course of the, the next couple weeks, and we'll, we'll look over it together. So um, right here, we're, uh, we're on the web page right here, borderlandsthegame.com backslash skill trees backdash index.html and here you can pick any of the four main characters today i want to start with wilhelm he's the character i'm the most excited about um and i the reason why is i like to play summoning characters i really enjoyed um really enjoyed roland and mordecai in borderlands the original and I really liked Axton and Gage in Borderlands 2, so Wilhelm just seems like the natural progression to me. And his action skill, which is Wolf and Saint, seems like a nice combination between Axton and Gage's uh, special ability, uh, which will send out two, uh, two drones, one's Wolf and one's Saint. Wolf's an attack drone who will fly around and just, you know, shoot at enemies, and Saint will uh, heal you and... Uh, and give you protective shields depending upon how you spec them out. Uh, the cooldown on this ability is 42 seconds and duration is 35 seconds and Saint will be regener regenerating 2.5% of your max health every second when they are active. So that's pretty cool. That, this is what I'm going to base my build around because um, I don't consider myself really amazing at first person shooters but I love classes like this that really give me the ability to uh, still play the game at a high level. Um, without necessarily being, you know, a crack shot. So let's pick up Wolf and Saint, and then uh, I'm going to start with the Hunter and Killer uh, tree, but we're also going to go into the Dreadnought tree as well. So first skill is Afterburner. Uh, Wolf's airspeed is increased. Additionally, additionally, your reload speed and projectile speed is increased. Um, as you can see, uh, each point increases airspeed by 6%, reload speed 5%, projectile speed 5%. So you take that up to 5%, you get a nice little bonus there. Uh, I really like the reload speed. Wolf's air speed up 30%. I don't know how much big of a deal that's going to make. It could, depending upon how fast he actually moves in general. So, and projectile speed doesn't really matter to me unless, you know, you're playing a sniper or you're shooting with some really slow, like, SMGs or something like that. This is probably not an ability that I'm going to take right away, but it's one that I'll play with to see if it is as good. But the one I am going to take initially is fire support. Increases your damage with all gun types and increases the damage dealt by wolf. And since our support ability, um, we're going to be relying heavily on that for damage, uh, and we want it out as much as possible, why not get the flat weapon damage for our ourselves and for wolf uh, that could be that could be a lot of extra damage especially if there's a calm that boosts that next is suppression to kill scale killing enemy gives you and wolf increased fire rate for a short period of time um, this one is probably one i'm going to take because if in borderlands i mean there's tons of enemies around except for during boss fights and i feel like this is really just going to help for general mobbing an increased fire rate for yourself by 30 percent that's pretty good but the 75% for Wolf is crazy. That's almost doubling his attack rate. Um, so that's going to increase his overall DPS dramatically. So I definitely think I'm going to take that. But the other one's interesting too. Venom Bolts. Wolf's shots have a chance to be Venom Bolts, which deal corrosive damage. Additionally, you have increased corrode chance and corrode damage with guns and grenades. So if you put five points into that, you get 30% chance that Wolf's attacks will be Venom, bolt ch venom Bolts. And you have 10% extra chance to corrode, and your corrode damage increased by 20%. Um, this is, I mean, this is a good ability, don't get me wrong. I just don't know how often that 30% is really going to help you out. Corrode damage in this game, as far as I know, is going to work a little bit like slag, but I don't think it's going to be um, as necessary. It's going to allow you to cause more damage to the enemies, so that might be helpful. Um, I don't know, but I feel like the 
the kill skill that's giving you extra fire rate to you and wolf is just going to be that much more useful and I'll explain that a little bit more detail later when we see some of the other skills in this tree. I'm going to take these out of Venom Bolt and we're going to move down. Now, laser Guided. This is pro arguably my favorite ability in all of his skill trees. This is just a no-brainer. you got to take it. When you activate Wolf and Saint, uh, you can hit a button and Saint will paint the target under your reticle. Wolf will focus attacks on the currently painted target and the target will receive increased damage from all sources, which is huge. An extra 25% damage from you, everybody playing with you, and Wolf. That is crazy. If a target is killed while painted, time will be added to Wolf and Saint's duration. And that's an extra 5 seconds per painted enemy kill. So if you're just going around the battlefield, concentrating on one enemy at a time and painting them as you need to you could keep wolf and saint out for a very very long period of time much like gauges um, i believe it was upshot robot uh, with death trap uh, every kill increases uh, the duration so that in turn could you know you can have wolf and saint out for several firefights at a time which is really awesome and you can control them which um, I was really hoping they were going to do that with some of the previous Borderlands games, but th this is great. I really like this ability. Definitely want to pick that up. Next is Kill Switch. This is a wolf ability. Whenever wolf is recalled, runs out of health, or expires, it will dive bomb enemies with explosive effects. Now, this sounds a lot like Nuke from uh, Axton's turret. I don't know, you know how much damage this is going to do, what the radius is on it, but for one point, it may be worth it since we're going to be summoning Wolf as often as possible. My only problem with this is our goal is to keep Wolf and Saint out as long as possible, and we're not going to try to, you know, go through the cooldowns and have him just dive bomb constantly. I don't know. I'm going to pick it up for sure, see how it works. It may not scale that well, like some abilities um, of this nature, um, but it, it should be useful for sure. Next one is Scramble. When Wolf is destroyed, it is replaced once for free, and the time will be added to Wolf and Saint's duration. Uh, this is pretty interesting. I definitely could see this being useful because we want them out as much as possible because we're relying on uh, Wolf's damage and definitely Saint's healing. This ability, though, it seems like more like a one-point wonder, if you will. Just point one into it, and you automatically get 30% deployment time added. But for every other point you add, it's only 5%, and it maxes out at 50%. So I, for me, the way that my skill tree, I've, I've built it out, that one point seems like all you really need, and it lets you get all the other necessary abilities. So that's what we're going to leave it at right now. But I could definitely see putting more points into it uh, later uh, if we get more skill points. The next one's Rolling Thunder. While Wolf is alive, you'll periodically gain stacks of Rolling Thunder, increasing Wolf's damage. So every five seconds, the ability lasts for 35 seconds. He can get up to 10% damage boost. So by the end of the Surveyor's basic duration, uh, he's going to have up to a 70% damage increase, which is crazy. I mean, that's amazing. But with the other skills like uh, Laser Guided, you're going to be increasing how long they're out. So you can keep adding these stacks over and over again, and there's no limit to the amount of stacks that you can get. So um, very, very quickly, Wolf could become, you know, a machine just decimating everything. So I think that's... That's definitely cool. Uh, a lot of promise with that ability, and definitely why I'm putting 5 out of 5 in it. Next is Cold War. When applying shock, incinerary, or corrosive status effects to an enemy, there's a chance for the target to freeze. Additionally, you gain increased status effect chance when using cryo weapons. Uh, cryo weapons are being introduced for the first time in the pre sequel. Um, they definitely look like they're going to be a lot of fun. Um, 5 out of 5, you're going to. Your freeze chance is going to be 25% when using any other type of status effect. So it's kind of cool. So if you're using like a shock weapon, you also have a chance to cause uh, the freeze status effect, which is fantastic. And then cryo weapons will also be dealing an extra 10% damage. So if you find yourself using a lot of cryo weapons, I could see how this ability would be very, very useful. Um, as, as far as right now, this is not helping Wolf and Saint for me. So I'm going to pass on this one initially. But I can definitely see how that one would be very useful. The other one is Escalation. Increases your critical hit damage 
and at five points that's going to be up to 25 percent and critical hits on enemies reduce the remaining cooldown of wolf and saint by a small amount this effect has a cooldown so at five out of five for every critical hit you get um every six seconds it's going to reduce the cooldown of uh saint and wolf by three seconds the average cooldown is 42 seconds by default. So I don't know if this is one of those abilities that you can, uh, you know, cut down the cooldown time while uh, Wolf and Saint is active. If it is, and it's in combination, uh, you know, with Scramble and Laser Guided, it may be a little overpowered, seeing as how you could probably have them out pretty much all the time, as long as there's a constant supply of enemies to kill. I, I don't know how that's going to work, but uh, the cr critical hit damage increase is nice, and the cooldown reduction is, you know, much needed. Definitely be appreciating that. So that's how, where I'm going to go. And then right down here, we got Omega Strike, which is the capstone ability of the Hunter Killer uh, skill tree. Wolf periodically launches a deadly missile strike against its targets. So this kind of seems like it's going to be like Scorched Earth from Axton's turret. Um, I don't know if it's going to, you know, launch as often or if it, it should be more powerful, seeing as how it's the capstone in the skill tree. Uh, but we'll just have to see how it goes. I think it'll, it'll definitely be at least cool to see, if nothing else. And then the next skill tree uh, is the Cyber Commando tree. This is where you augment Wilhelm's own damage and give him cybernetic enhancements. Um, I probably will, you know dabble in this tree but not for my wolf and saint build i'm definitely going to skip this one and maybe later you know go through the game again with wilhelm and and go through this tree and play around with it but for now we're going to go into the dreadnought tree which focuses mostly on saint the first one is auxiliary tanks increase wolves and saints duration and cooldown rate and it maxed out at five they have an extra 10 seconds of duration so that's a total of 45 seconds and the cooldown rate is 15%. So the cooldown is going to take about, about five seconds for the cooldown in total. This is a great uh, first tier ability. I mean, an extra 10 seconds on the duration is huge. And I mean, if you're combining that with some of the other abilities, they're going to be out for a long, long time. And the cooldown rate is just going to get them out that much faster. So definitely a no-brainer there. Fortify increases max health for you and Wolf. Additionally, while Saint is active, you deal increased damage with all gun types. So max out of five, maximum health plus 15%, Wolf's maximum health is 15%, and gun damage 20%. So this is a flat bonus. You have this all the time. Those are great bonuses right there. And you definitely don't want Wolf dying. I don't, I mean, he's flying around. I don't know how... Uh, you know, glass cannony he will be. I don't know if he, they're, if enemies are going to be aiming at him or be able to hit him that often. I don't know. But uh, that's definitely a great boost to you uh, and Wolf completely. So I'm def I think I'm going to take that one. Uh, we'll take it off for right now. Energize. Saint's ability will occasionally boost the shields of you and your friends. Additionally, Saint gains an increase to the rate at which he regenerates your health. Uh, this is kind of one of those, you know... Double-edged blades right here. Um, in Borderlands 2, there was an issue with Death Trap, uh, you know, trying to give characters uh, shield boost while they were using roid shields, which was pretty annoying. It would reduce your melee damage increase. Um, I don't know if that's going to be the case here, if they're going to make Saint a little bit more intelligent. But as, you know, single player, if you're not doing a melee build, 40% of your shield capacity uh, occasionally restored. There's nothing wrong with that. That helps. And Saint regenerates 3% of your max health on top of the 2.5% that it already does. So that's pretty good. Um, I don't know if I'm going to go into this because I do plan on playing a lot of multiplayer and this may screw some people over, uh, but it may be just one of those skills that you uh, spec into depending upon what you need. Uh, heat sinks, improves shield recharge rate and shield recharge delay. The bonus is doubled while Wolf and Saint are on cooldown. So maxed out, you have shield recharge rate of plus 30%, which is actually really good, and recharge delay 17%. And when Wolf and Saint are on cooldown and, you know, you're being targeted more, you're at less of an advantage, that goes up to 60 and 34%, so that's pretty good. I'm definitely going to go into that. I like to be a little bit more tanky, 
And I hope I hope in this game, obviously, shields are a little bit more effective than they were in the later parts of Borderlands 2. Next ability, um, Termination Protocols. Fight for your life is replaced by Termination Protocols. During it, you can walk at a reduced speed, fire your weapons, and you can constantly shock nearby enemies. If the timer runs out, your power core goes critical, releasing a nuclear explosion. For one point... I don't know why you would want to not have that. It sounds awesome. Being able to walk around, even slowly, uh, it's definitely be better than that kind of just, you know, like inch and crawl. And, you know, you got the nearby shocks attacking enemies, and you got the nuclear explosion that was much like uh, Krieg's ability in Borderlands 2. Uh, so hopefully that will, uh, I assume, if that goes off and kills enemies, it will revive you. Uh, but I definitely think that's a great ability. Just the, the extra advantage you have in Fight for Your Life is definitely worth the one point. Moving down, zero hour. When Saint is recalled or expires, he explodes, deploying a healing zone underneath you and your friends. Regenerate, regenerate health while standing in the zone. So you see, that's going to give. It's going to last for twelve seconds and regenerate eight percent of your max health for you and your friends standing in there. I don't know how big the zone is, but that's a really nice bonus. And that in com, in conjunction with kill switch with Wolf, where he dive bombs the enemies at the same time. That may, uh, you know, that may be able to save you in a firefight. You can, you may be able to kill all the enemies and then you can quickly reheal um, after Saint leaves the battlefield. That way you can be ready for the next wave. I don't know. It seems like it's going to be a good ability though, for sure. And for one point, why not? Next is rapid reinforcement. It's a kill skill. Killing an enemy increases your cooldown rate for Wolf and Saint and increases your movement speed and reload speed for a short time. Next out at five. 15% movement speed, that's not too bad. Reload speed, 40%, that's really good. And action skill cooldown rate is 20%. Like I said, you're going to be killing enemies constantly in this game. The action skill cooldown rate at 20%, that's really good. And most kill skills last for about 6 seconds, so that's dramatically going to be cutting down into your cooldown rate. Um, I'm definitely going to spec into this ability. It seems like it's going to be one of the more useful ones, um, especially if you're going to be relying more on the... Uh, the surveyors because the rest of these abilities down here are more meant to help Wilhelm survive you'll see why here hazmat containment system if you have incinerary shock or corrosive status effects on you you and your friends gain increased resistance to that element additionally you'll occasionally spread that status effect to nearby enemies while it's active max out of five you get 50 percent elemental resistance which is really good um i i, I can't say enough 50% is is an incredible percentage to be cutting into the chance of you getting a status effect um, the the spreading it to nearby enemies I, when it says occasionally you know it's kind of a crapshoot we don't know how often that's going to happen or he, even how powerful or useful that's going to be but the 50% resistance um, is definitely worth it um, if you're trying to be a more tanky build I am going to actually ignore that one for now but I can definitely see how it would be useful Hard to kill. Whenever you are shot or struck by an enemy, you gain a stack of hard to kill, reducing all damage received. All stacks are removed after a few seconds of taking no damage. Damage reduction, 0.1% per stack. Let's increase that to 5. 0.5% per stack. So you're looking at 50% maximum damage reduction if you have 100 stacks, which is really good. Uh, and assuming damage reduction in this game scales decently, like it did in Borderlands 1, hopefully they fixed it from Borderlands 2, that ability could be really good, especially when you're in a heavy firefight and you're in the thick of things. Um, I'm going to avoid that ability for now, uh, but like I said, that and hazmat containment system combined could really make you into an unstoppable killing machine, really. Kinetic armor increases your maximum health. Additionally, close range attackers have a chance to be struck by explosive feedback. The closer the enemy is to you, you're more likely to be. The closer the enemy is to you, the more likely he is to be struck. Uh, that doesn't seem like a bad ability either. Um, I, I, like I said, we don't know how much damage that's going to be doing, but that 20% max health isn't so bad. And explosive feedback up to. 25% chance. So that's not too bad. We don't know what the radius is on that, you know, how close the enemies need to be. That could be an issue. Um, but in condensed areas, uh, I would imagine that that's going to be doing a lot of damage. 
but I'm definitely not going to spec into that ability. We're going to go right down here. We got overcharge next, but we can't quite get to it yet. We need a few more skill points um, in this tree. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them into fortify because I like this ability a lot. Actually, I'm going to max it out at five. And then at overcharge, we have one skill point left. Immediately after being summoned, Saint will release an energy wave that will overcharge you and any nearby friends for a short duration. Overcharge players gain increased movement speed, fire rate, reload speed, and ammo regeneration. For 10 seconds, that's a lot of bonuses. The movement speed is 15%. Not really a huge deal, but that reload speed is 75%. And look right below that fire rate, 75% on top of that. That's insane. Ammo regeneration plus 10. I'm glad he's got some ammo regeneration uh, possibilities. And like I said, I don't know how fast that's going to be, but I think that'll probably be enough to keep his reserves up for sure. Um, this ability is great. And the one thing that I really see being good about this is once you start getting right off the bat when you summon them, you get this bonus and you can start tagging enemies, and painting them, killing them, and with this extra fire rate and damage, you will be able to get those extra five seconds added onto the duration of your surveyors. And then on top of that, and you add the rolling thunder stacks to Wolf, I think that's just really, it's just going to be a giant snowball effect, and you're just going to start destroying everything. I think that ability is going to definitely be worth it and one that everybody should take. And not only that, but it helps a lot in uh, multiplayer since everybody gets that bonus. And. What would be really crazy, I don't know if it's going to be possible, but if you got four Wilhelms in a team and you summon all of your surveyors at the same time, you all have this ability, I think this, I honestly think uh, your system's going to explode because all that fire rate, um, but it should definitely be a lot of fun, um, definitely an ability to look at. And, I mean, that is us at level 50. That's where I plan on putting all of my skill points, at least for now. I mean, I'm sure the build will change later once I know more and see how the abilities work together. And this Cyber Cabando tree, don't get me wrong, it's got a lot of great abilities in it. Um, and definitely increasing Wilhelm's gun damage a lot. Uh, no, nothing wrong with that. But this is how I'm going to, you know... Shoot to build my Wilhelm when uh, Borderlands the pre-sequel comes out in a couple weeks. He's definitely going to be my main character. So I hope you guys enjoyed the build. Uh, leave comments below. Let me know what you think about it. Maybe what your guys' builds are going to be. Maybe what other characters you guys would like me to cover. And as always, I'm Zylock with Media Hindsight, signing out.